I want to start to talk about what higher education is really about. So higher education is, uh, has always been very important. And uh, uh, we have seen, of course, a, a lot of development go coming from that over the, uh, this uh, whole industrial revolution that we have gone through. Now we are part of a next step in, in society's development where a lot of different uh, disruptive forces are coming in like information technology and uh, really uh, in a way challenging the, the individual disciplines right to develop in peace their own discipline. And it uh, really shakes up uh, both the higher education and the businesses that are going to be competitive and everybody needs to work more together somehow. So for higher education, it's always been a connection with the local and the global. Um, and uh, this is of course, science doesn't have any, any limits. Uh, knowledge is uh, free all over the world and it's the, the forefront of the knowledge is not found and bounded by a, a country or a region. So are regions and countries not important then? Yes, of course they are. Because, because they, the nation and the regions, they are actually the ones that influence where and when the science and knowledge are going to be important. And where you're gonna get, have attraction to build upon this and to also to get a good development of the of the possibilities to get knowledge into the business and build competitiveness, competitiveness, and of course, coming out of that, a good life for the people. So it is important. Uh, but now we also see that higher education is not only responsible for education, educating the next generation with the skills of disciplines and with the research to take the knowledge forward. It's also, of course, uh, more and more uh, important that we are connecting in the, to the rest of the world, to the society around us. It's called outreach in our terms of speaking. So um, in addition to that, we also have more and more uh, to develop the systemic view, to really see broader than any others can see. And we also have to really have a challenge to see long term because we are actually developing the leaders of the future and the, where they are going to, to function and do some make some difference is really depending on if we are able to see long term. So the, all these components have been part of challenges for higher education. Uh, so what, but we also, all the time we see that the world around us is changing and we have to, for course, we have to be be on top of that and really, really uh, grasp what is going on and maybe what's going to come in around the corner. First of all, just, just say, see what, where we stand today. We have now what we call the fourth industrial revolution. So everybody is familiar with the fourth industrial revolution. Well, it's, a, it's not mechanic anymore, it's kind of software, it's, it, to put it easy. So information technology goes into and disrupts, as I said, everything. It comes from the side and it makes a truck, not a hardware uh, device. It's a, a software device for moving uh, uh, something from one place to another. So, and that's going to happen in all different type of businesses. We first notice it in a, a company called Kodak. Uh, that died in the process because they didn't pick up the digital uh, possibilities. So what is coming around the corner then? Well, I think, I think it has a lot to do that with this, uh, this fourth revolution where, you, where we are f refining it more and more and we get also connected into uh, a better signal pro processing with the 5G, as it's called. So there's going to be development in, in that way that we are going to be able to utilize these disruptive forces in everything from, uh, you know, that you, your refrigerator will order its food by itself and things like that. I don't know what's going to happen, but it's a really can can be many things that on short term, we probably the cars are going, autonomous cars are going to be very safe. 
and, and uh, different developments for that. But around the corner, what is happening? What is it really that this society can build on? And what is that Armenia, as a small country, can take advantage of? if we're not just reacting to all the things that are happening, as if that wouldn't be enough, because with a lot of things are happening. But if we really want to see what is really a, a possibility for a country that has now a big, um, a big po possibility to go in the forefront of what's happening in the world. Remember that the rest of the world, most countries that are on top of uh, this uh, disruptive in information technology. They also are the ones that have traditions that are have deep roots and it's very difficult to change. So here we have a possibility with all these, this uh, new generation of young people that really can take on the, the, what is coming around the corner. And that is purpose and inclusiveness. If, if you think about the, that all this technology, engineering and uh, science have been driving us to where we stand today. So a lot of this type of knowledge that has taken us where we are today. But you all, then it's, engineers have, in my word, been fooled to just stay on that leg. But engineering from the beginning was actually as much connected to humanity and social science as they were to technology and, and uh, natural science. And this is what's happening now in the fifth industrial generation. And we already see it in some of the businesses that are forward thinking, and the businesses that are in the world that want to survive, that want to be part of, of the future. They already are seeing that how can we now with all these disruptive things that happens, not only with information technology, but, but also in materials, energy solutions, a lot of things that comes from the side and just changes everything that we are familiar with. If that change can be controlled in a way that it's good for people, that it can be built with a new mindset, where you start, you don't start where you stand today, you move over and you look at the possibilities with purpose and, and also with inclusiveness, then you can be competitive tomorrow and you can also really develop, use the tools we have today. The difficulty here for a university is to really break the silos between the different colleges or schools that we have. So this is what we can do here in Armenia. We can break the silos and we can, we can dr be driven by words like integrate. What is integration? I mean, integration is, of course, where we, meeting places where we really m make sure that you meet with people and an interest and knowledge that usually don't meet. You have to meet in a way that you can put the evolution and new possibilities to come about in that meeting. And this is something that we, we, cannot, we can do collective intelligence from. We can get collecti uh, collective intelligence comes out of that. And I know that the young people catches on to this immediately. But uh, of course, that is something that is hard to do if you're trained to be in uh, isolation. Then transformation is really also something that we can do and we are building up in universities. Transformation is really built on trust. We have to really take the time to build the trust by observing and understanding the others before we collaborate. Not get some money and start to collaborate and then try to understand each other. That does not work. And so the third, uh, the third driving force is to be universal, to really um, we really think that we need to look at every input as e with equal value, ownership and responsibility. So here in Armenia, we can actually take the, the university's uh, contribution here to, and higher education contribution to the society with the challenges and opportunities in mind. We can uh, put a focus on the aim, uh, the aim at we will uh, really be proactive 
the goal that we will build um, a model that is in line with the fifth industrial re revolution where humanity and social science is actually one leg of engineering and working together in, with the understanding. And I just want to give you, I know my time is almost out, but I want to give you uh, 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 some exa two examples, fast examples so that you can com comprehend this more in the reality, because I said in the beginning that science is local and global, and we also need to connect it to the reality. So as now, uh, as, we are, as I'm speaking here, uh, right now, there is a, a process going on to, be, to really co com come together on an open national center of excellence in uh, artificial intelligence here in this country where it's open so that there will be incentives for all the universities and all the contributions from business and, and public sector to be part of this. And this is connecting also with the clusters of strength in the different Marses. And they are on board and like to do this. So an open national center where we also can build in the whole uh, contribution from all the disciplines. The other example I want to uh, say that is also on its way it's a value-based circulation. Now, now that, that sounds kind of theoretical maybe, but if I say waste management handling in a, in a way that we are thinking about values in the whole chain. And I think that is something that we have also interest from the Ministry of Territorial here and we have also from other countries helping us and to really make a connection that we also make sure that our water all the water that is circulating is going to be uh, in a very good shape for us to drink and use in many ways. So, so I think that now uh, higher education here in Armenia is uh, at a crossroad, like many other things. And I think that we are actually ready, we are prepared, and we are, have already started. That, uh, and we work with integration, transformation, and universality. And I hope that you are going to help us, because we all need to work together, away with all the silos.